Welcome back to Cruising America, everyone. Today we're visiting the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. We're Steve and Kathleen. We're Cruising America in our 35-foot fifth-wheel RV, chasing 70-degree weather year-round. If you'd like to watch our previous videos, please click the Cruising America playlist link in the description below this video. Otherwise, enjoy our current episode starting now. We visited the South Rim three years ago and planned on visiting the North Rim too, but learned the hard way the North Rim is significantly higher in elevation and consequently doesn't open until May 15th each year. We were there the week before, so we visited everything else in the area instead, including Pipe Springs National Monument and Coral Pink Sand Dunes State Park. We finally visited the North Rim and we're very glad we did the two and a half hour drive from Page, Arizona. Friends told us the North Rim was much better and we wholeheartedly agree. Plus, visiting the North Rim also had several bonuses for us. The first was a very scenic drive. Mountains, the Colorado River, and the southern rim of the Perea Vermilion Cliffs Wilderness Area frame the first two-thirds of your drive. Then the Kebab National Forest provides stunning contrast via high-altitude forest. The expanses of the south rim are larger, but the contrast of forest right up to the north rim is a wonderful green icing on this cake of majestic beauty. While we were delighted with a herd of elk literally living and feeding around the Grand Canyon Visitor Center of the south rim, the north rim has a herd of bison. This was an unexpected bonus especially since one of the two main herds in Yellowstone National Park isn't accessible this year due to flooding. You can hike from the South Rim to the North Rim, but bear in mind this 21 mile distance includes a nearly 5,000 foot elevation loss from the South Rim to the Colorado River, followed immediately by a nearly 6,000 foot elevation gain from the river to the North Rim. Needless to say, this is not an easy day hike. Only 10% of all Grand Canyon visitors make it to the North Rim, meaning very few folks, if any, at most of the stops. Why? Because driving from the South Rim to the North Rim requires a four and a half hour drive of 220 miles. In other words, you could do both rims in one day, but you wouldn't see much of what both sides have to offer. We recommend a minimum of two full days for each side, especially with gas more than $5 a gallon right now. The North Rim invokes a sense of solitude and serenity. The natural beauty and lack of throngs invite you to slow down, ponder, and enjoy the landscape, instead of waiting in lines and jostling for space along the rail. Plus, nearly perfect temperatures and cool breezes wafting through the tall ponderosa pines just contrast the North Rim that much more from the south. You're looking at two main areas to visit on the North Rim, the Visitor Center with Bright Angel Point and Cape Royal on the Wahala Plateau. The Visitor Center encampment has of course all the services, including the Grand Canyon Lodge. Of the folks that do visit the North Rim, most come here. Bright Angel Point is the on-the-map must-see. The quarter-mile hike on unlevel blacktop is just as much of an experience as the views over the transept from the point. 
This trail is steep in places with drop-offs and stairs, but provides dramatic views into Roaring Springs and Bright Angel Canyons. The must-see here not on the map is the outcropped point below and just southwest of Grand Canyon Lodge. You can also get to it by taking the transept trail from Bright Angel Point. Return via the Grand Canyon Lodge and take a load off while sitting on the veranda for even more great views. The other main area includes Point Imperial and Cape Royal, reached via a winding scenic drive. The trip to both points, with short walks at each and several stops at pullouts along the way, can easily take half a day. Point Imperial, the highest point on the north rim at 8,800 feet, overlooks the Painted Desert and the eastern end of Grand Canyon. Here the canyon transforms as the narrow walls of Marble Canyon, visible only as a winding gash, then opening dramatically to become grand. Layers of red and black Precambrian rocks, not visible at Bright Angel Point, add contrast and color.
Cape Royal provides a panorama up, down, and across the canyon. With seemingly unlimited vistas to the east and west, it is popular for both sunrise and sunset. The sweeping turn of the Colorado River at the Uncar Delta is framed through the natural arch of Angel's Window. Look for the Desert View Watchtower across the canyon on the south rim. This popular viewpoint is accessible via a paved, level trail, but the point itself is uneven rock scrambling. Because of the remoteness and far fewer visitors, the North Rim is far less commercialized than the South Rim, which of course is the whole point. If you're traveling with kids, particularly teens, they may find the North Rim to be a little too laid back. The South Rim and its facilities have the activities and amenities that appeal to today's families. Want a Grand Canyon air tour? They're at the South Rim. Hotels with continental breakfast, in-room Wi-Fi, pools, etc.? South Rim again. Out-of-park properties such as the Kebab Lodge and Jacob Lake Inn also book several months in advance. Gateway cities are two to three hours or more away.